morning cats. We have just finished Black History Month and Women's History Month is upon us. Here is what's on with cats news. School is back in session, but our sports team are having difficulties getting back into the swing of things. On January 24th, LA Mayor paid a visit to the Diego Rivera Learning Complex. Our Los Angeles Mayor was on campus late last month in order to pick off the Student Success Program. That program will provide 1,000 economically disadvantaged students with job skills and work experience at school. COVID is still having an impact on our education. At least 120 students tested positive for COVID-19 since school started in early January. The positive test has a huge impact on attendance. Mr. Roque, the assistant principal, says that COVID has caused many students to miss school, but not all absences are due to the pandemic. Go to class, people. Nathan filled a report on Dr. King and his importance. And now we're going to take the time to go over a very important topic about a brave soul and a man, a name very well known. The name Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is known by many and posted upon many monuments. Dr. King was an activist and a Baptist minister, an American hero and a hero of the civil rights movement. Dr. King rose to leadership of the American civil rights movement at an early age. By the time he was 30 years old, he was speaking for leading the charge and advocating for the civil rights of all Americans. One day, this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream. Dr. King's birthday is on January 15th and celebrated on the third Monday of, of January each year. But the echo and celebration of Dr. King continues in the celebration of African American History Month. Dr. King's birthday is celebrated with parades and is usually very festive. This year, most parades have been canceled due to COVID. It's important to remember our heroes for civil rights as we continue with African American History Month. Dr. King Day. We are at the beginning of February, and that means we take a moment to honor our January Student of the Month. Ben catches up with him to discuss his achievement. Hello, Cats crew. Today we have with us a student by the name of Joseph Castillo. He's student of the month for January. The student of the month is selected by a panel of the teachers. Let me just say that we're so glad to have you here today. Thanks for taking time out of your day just to come here. How do you feel about it being student of the month? Uh, I feel honored to be here and being elected for student of the month. One of the criteria for being student of the month is work ethic. How do you think he managed to maintain such a good work ethic? I managed to maintain a good work ethic by paying attention to the teacher's instructions. Take notes, cats. You most likely need this info for the future. Who or what motivates you to strive for your best? Uh, the teachers definitely motivate me, telling me to keep doing what I do. That's good. Shout out to any of the teachers. Yeah, uh, Ms. Sanchez just next door. She's one of the best teachers I've ever had. Shout out to Ms. Sanchez. Why do you think you got Student of the Month status nomination and what efforts and sacrifices did you go through? Uh, I think I got uh, nominated for Student of the Month because of my work ethic and the sacrifices I went through weren't really that hard. Just keep pushing forward and doing your work. A huge thanks to you for speaking with us and a huge thanks to you, the audience, for watching. Remember to maintain social distancing, wear a mask, and stay safe out there. Cats Pride. Congratulations, Joseph. I have a feeling that you're going to continue to do well in your high school career. This has been a year of change for many of us. Our school, Communication and Technology School, is also going through a change, a change of principal. We want to welcome our new principal to our campus. Today, for the interview, Ulises sits with Mr. Goslin, our new principal, to find out a little bit more about him. 
Hello, welcome to Cats News, and I'm joined with Mr. Goslin. Hi, nice to be here. I'm so glad for you to join us. Thank you. Yes. What interests you to join Cats? Um, my experience was uh, always about. Uh, well, I'm a, I'm I'm a science teacher, so it's like science technology, and then when I saw that. Katz was talking about communication and technology. Uh, I was like, it was just the best fit. So I decided to, to apply. And um, hopefully, I can make Katz uh, more attractive for communication and technology. So and what do you like about being a principal? I think, you know, when I was um, a teacher, um, I felt like I was having an impact on my students, even though I was in a comprehensive school with almost more than 200 students, it was still having an impact on 200 students. Now, as a, you know, my growth into a, a coach or my instructional coach or an AP was having an impact on more and more students. Now, being here at CATS, I can work with the team at CATS and then create an, in, or create an environment that is safe for students mm -hmm. to be able to learn and even go with, um, with better expectation. So my impact is not necessarily on my 200 students. It's now the whole school. So whether it's the, the students or even the staff, and promoting growth for the staff, but at the same time, success and a safe le learning environment for the students. Okay. And where do you see CATS in the next five years? A school of choice. People's going to want to come to a CATS because of the program that is focused on technology and focused on communication. Hmm. Is there anything that you want to add I want to meet with everyone. I'm going to have a meeting um, at some point that is going to introduce me as well as all the new staff that's coming that I'm bringing to create a full scale uh, staff. Um, and this, this, this big team is making me more, even more excited to be here at CATS. So I'm here to support. If there is anything that CATS students, teachers, or parents wants to get um, or share with me, my door is always open. Here is a bit of an editorial note. Last month, Jonathan spoke with our previous principal, Dr. Gonzalez. We have made that interview available for you at the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Be sure to click subscribe and share this with friends and family. CATS Pride, CATS Pride. Hello, my name is Jonathan Aparo, and I'm here with the one, the only, Dr. G. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. What made you want to become a principal? Um, what made me want to become a principal was my experience as an a avid tutor um, when I was in college at UC Santa Barbara. I was an avid tutor in two different middle schools, and I got to interact with students and see teachers in action. and especially uh, working with students in like low-income communities and students who are minorities who struggle to get into college, which the AVID program focuses on. I was motivated to start thinking about becoming a teacher through that program. And also just, um, I also ran an after-school program specifically for Latino students. They were elementary school students. Um, so that program also kind of, I experienced like my passion for education and also equity issues and trying to make sure that those students also had access to quality instruction. So once I realized that I really like this work, I looked for programs where I could get my teaching credential. How many years have you been at this school? That's a question that most of us want to know, especially freshmen. This is my seventh year Seven. wow. um, at the Communication and Technology School as the principal. Through those seven years, how was the experience? How did this school change? Um, so when I first started, the only people in the office were me, the counselor, one counselor, and one office tech. 
one campus aid. Like if we looked at, aside from teachers, we only had four people that worked in the C-100 office. Um, the first person that I hired was Mr. Roque um, as a second counselor, um, an office tech, a second campus aide, and then we started building from there, uh, adding all the additional staff like Mr. Romo, Ms. Perez, Ms. Gooding, the additional counselor. So we didn't have all the staff that we have now. The teachers are all different except for Ms. Green. She's the only teacher that was here when I first started. Is there anything like special like you remember that you're really proud of on changing the school is there anything like you're so proud on um, what you did for the school I mean I think for me I mean we've done so much like if I think about it we've done I feel like uh, we've done a lot and then sometimes I feel like we still have so far to go that sometimes it's hard to give yourself credit for the way the school has changed because you feel like there's still things like kids damaging the restrooms or kids tagging on the walls or me adding something nice to the building and someone messing it up. Like it gets really frustrating, but it's also still kids being kids sometimes. And then, but at the same time, we've done a lot of work. I think for me, I've always felt like when people come to CATS and they say it feels different here, like everybody's nice and it feels different. And like students like their interactions with teachers and I, very minimally, and I don't think we're perfect, but very, like, it doesn't happen often. Like, our teachers treat kids with respect for the most part. Um, and I think students feel comfortable with several adults on the campus. To me, that's biggest the biggest impact. And also, I've been sharing, for me, just personally, when I see students who come in with a really tough exterior or have had a really difficult life and take it out on us, like, cuss us out and all that stuff and eventually with us just like continuing to be respectful continuing them to offer them support like eventually they'll start treating us with respect back and start coming to us for help that's the biggest impact I can have more than anything is changing a student from being like super hard to being more in touch with like just their sense of humanity and being a kind person you know um is there any advice for these students in this school? Um, I think the advice is for them to give us a chance because I know after being at home, we kind of lost the school culture we had built. It doesn't happen automatically. It took me five years because right before the pandemic was our best year and it took five years to get to a place where students really cared about each other and treated each other with respect, where we had like almost zero fights. Um, and so we were all really happy right before the pandemic hit about where our school was. And coming back, it has been traumatizing for me because it felt like my first year, um, not as bad, but just with like the level of students fighting over really silly things, thankfully. And I think that's my only advice would be for them to have patience and letting us get to that space again and build it again. I feel like uh, the freshmen will really mess out on what you uh, did for the school. But what advice would you have for this new principal? Um, I think my advice would be to get to know students and especially the ones who get in trouble a lot, to get to know them like and know their personal lives and not talk about school but talk about other things because that's how you build relationships with them mm -hmm. um and then use that relationship to then try to connect them to education and try to connect them back to the school um just being open to different opinions that teachers might have and to before making any decision run it by as many people as possible that might be impacted by that decision. So when it comes time to actually do something, most people already know what is coming and most people have had a say in shaping what is going to happen because everybody's opinion and perspective makes whatever idea you might have as a principal better. Um, and so you want to expose your ideas to as many people as possible and be willing to change them around and take input. And when you bring it to everyone else, like it already has everyone's ideas embedded in it and more buy-in and getting it done. You're the new principal? Good advice. <laughs> now, 
here's the most important question. Mm -hmm. That most of the students in this school are, you know, wanting to find out. Will you keep making TikToks for us? Oh, my TikTok channel. Yes, of course. I am trying to think. Okay, so one thing I'm thinking is because I am going to be working from home. So I was thinking of going on TikTok Live. And while I'm working on my boring reports and putting like, hi, I'm a former principal. If you have questions, if you're a teacher, an educator, if you have education questions, hit me up. So it can keep me entertained while I'm like That's bored great. at home and interacting. So I have been like contemplating doing some of that. Um, and then obviously I'm going to try to create TikToks for all the schools I'll be visiting. So when I go visit schools, I want to create little highlight reels of the different schools and what they have to offer and programs. So my goal is when you guys do things like present showcases or anything to go to the site, record and kind of like share those out like to the public. So, yes, that's great. That's great. We can't <laughs> wait to see them. We wish you the best, Thank all you. of us here at this school. You have been an amazing principal for all of Thank us, you. especially during the years that I've been here. Thank you so much for having Thank the you. time to be here. Back to you, Nelly.